to talk about this case and the implications it could have for police departments around the country is attorney Kenyon Brown. He's a partner at Hughes Hubbard and a former U.S. attorney. He also served on the U.S. Attorney General's Advisory Committee for Law Enforcement and Community Relations during the Obama administration. Kenyon, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. First thing, what were those four officers' first mistakes? <coughs> Well, I think the first mistake that they made was, as uh, one of my law enforcement trainers used to say, they, they didn't c contain the idiot within, uh, and they were more concerned about showing uh, their own power uh, rather than enforcing the law as they had been trained to do, apparently by the Minnesota Police Department. Uh, thus far, we've heard evidence from uh, several witnesses, most recently, uh, on Tuesday uh, from the medical support coordinator that uh, the officers in question did receive training uh, dealing with a duty to render aid. Uh, and not only did they fail to follow policy, uh, but they failed to see the human side of things and follow their training to offer, to offer uh, medical assistance to George Floyd, even to the point of not uh, calling an ambulance in immediately, or, or and they had to wait rather uh, to do that, or, or to they did not offer CPR to him mm -hmm. or, or life saving measures. They waited until uh, the medics arrived in order for him to receive that critical care. They're using the defense of excited delirium. What is excited delirium, and can that be used in this case? You know, I, I'm not sure I'm so sure I've even heard of excited delirium outside of this context. And, and frankly, I, I think it's a creation of uh, the defense in this case. Uh, you know, officers are required to use any force necessary in order to subdue the threat. Uh, but once that threat is no longer in play, uh, like clearly was uh, the situation in the George Floyd case, they have a duty and obligation to kind of ratchet down and, and stop administering force. I don't think anyone uh, would say that Mr. Floyd, while he's on the ground, handcuffed, uh, looking down on, on, you know, pressed with his face pressed to the ground, uh, poses a threat. Uh, so even if someone would argue that he was in an excited delirium state, clearly uh, he was under control, he was handcuffed. Uh, and so I don't think that that's going to be a successful defense. And frankly, I don't think your rank and file law enforcement officers across this country uh, support that type of defense of the work they do every day. And quickly, Kenyon, will the result of this trial and the result of the Derek Chauvin trial have any effect on policing across the country, you think? You know, I, I think it will, uh, in that officers are more cognizant of the fact that no matter what their rank is, they have a duty and obligation to hold their fellow officers accountable. And, and policies across the country are starting to reflect that. And there's less of a concern about what is typically referred to as the thin blue line uh, to protect uh, your fellow officer when there might be internal wrongdoing as there is to uphold the integrity of the law. So I think that is coming not only in policy, but it's coming in the law. And like, I, like I've said before, the more uh, time an officer spends on the scene, the more pregnant they are with liability for the actions of their fellow officers who are engaging in wrongdoing. All right, sir. Kenyon Brown, thank you so much. Be safe, be well. Thank you so much.